I think I'm going crazy. I don't even want to be me anymore. I know that makes no sense whatsoever, but <laughs> it's the truth. I'm just fed up of being me. It's like it's a punishment being me. You know, it's a punishment being me. It's a punishment. What what voice so you pick? It's a Autobots. No. Family voice. I try to reconcile in my mind the thoughts that I'm having when I just can't. I just, I just don't understand anymore what I'm becoming. In my mind, I see images that I know are not me. I see me, images. Images that are not of me, when I don't know who they are. What am I to do with this? Hmm? You see what I mean? I'm going crazy. <laughs> I don't even know which voice is mine anymore. It's like I'm in some kind of play. But I don't know which character I am. <laughs> How quaint that is. I think the truth is I'm going out of my mind. That is the actual truth. Because who sits around not knowing which voice is their own? which personality they are, what actually is going on in their life. I can't really tell you. This could be me. I am me. I am me. No, no. I am me. You don't know who you are. You don't remember that where you come from. No, I do. I remember you. Don't you remember how old you are? I think you're young, but you're old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's crazy, yeah? <laughs> It's crazy, right? I mean, I am certifiably crazy. Off the wall! Yeah, I forgot to tell you, I have those kind of mood swings where one minute I'm low and then the next minute I'm high. And then I'm just mad and crazy with all this energy and all this hatred and vile, which I don't even know where it's coming from. I just want to scream out! <laughs> For what? For who? No one hears these screams. How many millions of years have, how many millions of people have been screaming out? Maybe God hears. But the reward for that is, once you're past this life, this punishment here, we're made to go down tiny, tiny avenues, chiseled out by those that went before us, to live a life <laughs> to live a life. It's not really to live a life, is it? 
we're not really living in the real sense of the word because we have no control over what we do every day. We have to do certain things. There is a conformity that we have to follow for if we do not do that, avenues, those walls crush you. Slowly but surely they crush you. And there you are, you are alone, and you are outside the walls. Hmm? Indeed. Now I could sit in this solitude for hours and afterwards I don't even know what happened, what I did, what I was going to do, what I wanted to do, nothing. What, what, what do you call this? What do you call this guy in existence? Do you know the name? Crazy. Oh, I'm crazy. One hundred percent crazy. This isn't comedy, by the way. This is serious, serious things, matters. Thoughts and expressions that are coming off the mind and that have to be translated from one's voice to the world of the outside. Those all in the avenues, waiting and waiting. But finally the moment of freedom comes, their last gasp of breath, and then they are dead. And then they may live. But here, here on terra firma, we must do as we are told. We must believe as we are told. The brainwashing that begins at childhood, at school, through television, through all the different mediums, through from government. Unconsciously sometimes, I say unconsciously, that's an Americanism. Subconsciously I should say, because you can't be unconscious, because unconscious you'd be like that. Subconscious. Let's get the proper grammar. It's important, I'm sure. But I'm not actually sure if it is important, because at the end of the day, there are only words that we have made up. Oh, you believed. Oh, you thought these these things were cosmic in some way, but they're not. And we have a million languages. Everyone has a word for everything, even word. There is no single word that is the same within all the languages, thus proving that the languages are man-made and therefore have no meaning whatsoever, only to us, as a form or a way of communicating. Yes. Mm. So it all means nothing, or everything, whichever way you want to see it. Really, it means nothing. That's the unescapable truth that we now must endeavour to explain. That we are all but alone. And we are merely travelling through space, although we don't even notice it or see it, but we are. It's funny that, isn't it? The thought for those people who don't believe in God because they can't see God, and yet we are moving and spinning in space. Here, the planet Earth, here, space, other planets. Slowly turning, spinning, moving, ever closer to whatever. And yet, we don't feel it, we don't see it, we don't sense it, we don't know it. But it is happening. Interesting thought to take away. If nothing else is taken away, that thought should be. It's a very important thought. Thought of the day, perhaps. Yes, I think that should be a thought of them. Oh. I really need tablets. That's what I need. Some, some form of tablet to take away this. 
from it. So he is free to sleep. <laughs> so anyway, in the quest of madness and grazeness, or whatever you wish to call it, we have endeavoured to realise that through this form and only this form you can see the truth of everything, that there is everything means nothing. And nothing possibly could mean everything because it is all that we know. So existence is merely to live, to experience misery, isn't it? Misery, unfulfillment and, what's that word, not missed opportunity or missed dreams, unrequainted life. There are moments of happiness, that is true. Some people are lucky, they have more happiness than sadness. But still, nevertheless, the underlying truth is that everyone experiences misery and unfulfillment because we all have to do whatever we're told, we all have to do whatever has been decided. We can't just decide, oh, I'm not going to work now, you have to work to be able to live. <laughs> So, a high percentage of our time, <laughs> even though life is free and was God-given, we spend most of our time, high percentage, working to live, to be able to live. By the time we've done that working, which by means is gaining money, so that we can live. So, without doing the money and the working, we're not living. Because you can't live on nothing, can you? But you can't. <laughs> That's actually true, isn't it? Because you couldn't. Because if you had nothing, you'd die of starvation. You have to have food. You have to have water. And none of these things are free anymore. I mean, they were back when Adam and Eva were here. But now they're not free. You have to pay for them. Wherever you go. So, even on those bare essentials of actual things that would keep you alive, life. You need to work to gain money to get those things at the bare minimum of just surviving. So imagine you want more things, you want to do things as why did we, why were we created, why were we born, why are we here? If not do some things. But to do those things we have to do that work and that's a high percentage and then by the time you've done all that, I mean, that's if you stay awake for a 10 to 12 hour day and seven hours to eight hours is taken up with working, that leaves you three, four hours to do things, by which time the sun has gone down and things cannot be done and you're tired and then you have to go round and round and round and round and round and round. It's much like, isn't it? It's much like um, a hamster. Moving around in a wheel, yes! That's what you are. That's what I am. That's what we all are. Hamsters. Huh. We just got the names mixed up, no? We're hamsters going around and around in a circle waiting to die. Or to experience some of those happy moments, but. Most of the moments are going to be sad ones, aren't they? Losing people. Our capacity brought on by literature and by television and by books and by all the great thinkers that have gone before is to make man's mind imaginative. Or maybe it is God given that we have this mind and that we can think of things and want things and desire things And yet, uh, paradoxically, we can't have them because those things that we can dream of are greater than our own means. So we're left unfulfilled, unrequainted, unrequainted 
Only until one day we realize this, and then we become crazy. Not my definition. I'm not sure whose definition it is because it's a word to describe an ailment of which is made up. We like to put things in boxes and believe that everything is exactly the same, even though it's not. Variations. Well, I'm glad uh, you've enjoyed my sharings of my ramblings of my madness. I think that ramblings of a madman. The thing is, obviously, I am quite mad indeed. That, I mean, let me see. But the thing is, what if the madman is the one who has the intelligence? What if the madman is able to see all this? What if everything that I've said is actually true? 100%! Godly true. What then does that mean about the madman? Is it possible that you could be quite crazy and yet genius? They do say there is a thin line. But how crazy that would be. You have to be mad to know the truth, or the truth makes you mad. And that, as they say, is the end.